Hey, good day, good day, good day. Holistic Life Podcast, Instagram. And we're getting ready to get our broadcast started on our clubhouse. Good day, everyone. I want to welcome you to this week's uh, Managing COVID-19, part two. And let me pause just here for one second as I get us going on to the other, the other chat here. I hope that everyone is having a great day, a wonderful um, Tuesday. Uh, we know that um, yesterday was the commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King. And we are just in celebration mode of just what all God is doing welcome 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 to those of you that are coming in on the clubhouse um this is being recorded um i will stop once i get to q a um, but just to put that disclaimer out greetings roxy glad to have you join us good morning kina glad to have you join us so on last week i had the opportunity um, i had two other um, ladies that we brought to um, the stage on last week. And we were basically talking about the effects of stress on your body. And on last week, we specifically looked at our primary stress um, response. And um, this week, we are going to focus on our secondary stress response. <clears throat> now, when we look at our primary stress response, just to give a review. And if you did not get a chance to um, to watch um, last week's um, podcast, um, please do so. Please do so in its entirety. Um, but I want to just review those in the different areas that we talked about, and then we will move um, into our secondary stress response. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about our primary stress response, these are immediate an urgent response to a serious threat. And even on last week, we talked about um, defining and giving definition of what the fight to flight syndrome is and what that what, um, what is happening um, in, our, in our body. And so last week we talked about the skin, our heart, our muscles, our lungs, our liver, our digestion, our blood, our sweat glands, and also the bladder and the rectum. Now this week we are going to talk about the secondary stress response. The secondary stress response um, talks about and it deals with the ongoing response to undealt with stress. Let me say that again. Our secondary sh stress response deals with the ongoing ongoing response to undealt with stress. And when we when we kind of take a look at this from the standpoint of COVID-19 and the different things that are happening um, in people's um, bodies. So you, we've heard a lot about people that have underlying um, conditions, how COVID-19 affected them um, slightly different or sometimes even um, greatly different than uh, those who um, maybe were a little bit more on the healthier side. And so when it comes to um, understanding um, COVID, we really don't, um, you, you really can't say with a definite that um, it's definitely going to be this or that because you really have to look at some of the underlying um, issues and the underlying concerns that is going on with the individual. So again, our primary stress response is that fights of flight or that immediate and the urgent response to a serious threat. Now, secondary 
stress response. And I keep saying it because I really want us to get a clear understanding of the different types of stress response. So our secondary are the things that are undealt with. So when we don't deal with and when we don't have an understanding of how to deal with um, how to how to deal with stress, we have um, there's a book that's out there and, and we, we, we talk this and we teach it that feelings buried alive never die. OK, feelings buried alive never die. So when you go through stress and when you go through um, any type of trauma, if you don't know how to process that trauma, it literally um, has the ability to lodge itself in our body systems. So let's take a look at the skin. Let's talk about the skin on today. So our skin, when there is ongoing undealt with stress, ongoing undealt with stress, it means that you have less blood supply, which can lead to diseases developing. So ongoing stress or undealt with stress, that is when you're looking at the skin, what happens literally to the skin is that there is a less blood supply, which can lead to diseases developing. Okay. Hey, Sissy. Now, when we look at the heart, again, we're talking about undealt with stress. When we look at the heart, some of the stress response of the heart would be a racing heartbeat and high blood pressure can lead to strokes or heart attack. So ongoing response to undealt with stress, it can lead to strokes or heart attacks. Now, when we look at the muscles, muscles, what happens with undealt with stress? Our muscles, they have an ongoing tension, an ongoing tension, which leads to aches, pains, and even muscle strains. Aches, pains, and even muscle strain. So we're talking about the, the, the undealt with, the things that when we don't address stuff and, you know, um, you, you, you get to popping off, you know, now when we, we know that our muscles in our primary response is that the muscles, they tense and they get ready for action. But when stress is not dealt with, what's happening is it's ongoing so it's like a it's like a continual cycle of tenseness to continual cycle of tense muscles and what begins to happen now you develop uh you develop uh trigger points uh you can develop uh we we call it um taut muscles or like the muscle tissue uh, that is around the muscle can get real real tight and, and it's almost like like glue. And so if you are one that gets massages, then you would understand sometimes if your therapist um, explains to you the things that are going on in your body. OK. And so the, those muscles, when it's ongoing tension, it's going to lead to those aches and to those pains and even sometimes muscle strain. So ongoing. So I'm an advocate for massage. Um, get get a massage. Do whatever you need to do to alleviate the ongoing undealt with stress. Now, let's take a look at the lungs. What happens with the lungs? With the lungs, you have super oxygenated blood can lead to blackouts and upset heart rhythms. So all of our all of our body parts or body systems are interconnected. They're interconnected. And we know that with, with COVID-19, um, that it's what? It's primary a respiratory illness. And what's happening is that it, it, so if you already have compromised respiratory system, if your lungs are already compromised, then what's, what's going to happen? So as your body is trying to fight off uh, the fight off the virus, it's not getting the the oxygen. If it's already low, 
in oxygen. If you already are not receiving the oxygen that is needed in your body on just a regular day, then this is this is what happens. This is one of the things that is going on in the lungs because your lungs, it has not been receiving the proper um, blood, the proper um, oxygenated blood. So now your, your rhythms are are, are compromised. Your heart rhythms are compromised. Your, your, your lungs, they don't have the ability to even receive because why? They have not been in a state where you have received oxygenation even prior to having COVID-19. So this is very key and very instrumental when we talk about the ongoing response with undealt with stress, okay? So now let's take a look at the liver. With the liver, the body's own fats and proteins broken down and released to provide further energy. So now we have our own fat and our own storage uh, within our within our body, which our liver um, processes, the proteins broken down and released to provide further energy, that's not there. That becomes compromised. It becomes compromised. When we look at the blood, when we look at the blood, if you aren't getting proper oxygenation, OK, if you if you aren't uh, your, your lungs have to work, work even harder. Now, not only are the lungs working harder, but what happens to the blood, the blood or your heart works harder due to thickened blood. Let me say that again. When there is an ongoing response to undealt stress the blood causes the heart to work harder because the blood is thicker. The blood has been thickened. So can, are we seeing the parallels? If you already have a condition or an issue or as some type of blood disorder, then that's going to put you in a state of you're not being at your optimum to be able to fight off the virus, okay? Let's take a look at our cholesterol. Cholesterol, when we don't deal with our stress, there is high cholesterol in the blood, which can cause hardening of the arteries. I hope you're tracking with me this morning. So now the blood is causing a cholesterol or your cholesterol to be elevated, which now causes a hardening of the arteries. And if the arteries are hardened, then what is that doing to the heart? And if the heart does not have the ability to uh, pump blood because the blood has been thickened, and if the blood has been thickened, it's causing the heart to work even harder, which is the reason why you see some people with the high blood pressure, you see them um, coming down with having strokes um, or even heart attacks. Again, all of this stems from the ongoing response to undealt with stress. Next, let's take a look at our digestion. Our digestion is so very important. So very important. Um, our immunity, um, our ability to fight off um, any type of, of disease or any type of virus um, rests on how healthy is your digestive system. If your digestive system is compromised, it's going to automatically impact your immune system. Let me say that again. If you have any type of digestion problem, issues with digestion, issues with gut, if your gut health is not healthy, it's going to directly impact your immune system. 
And I know this personally, and I believe that I shared this on last week. And actually, I share it every time I, I talk about um, I talk about wellness because it, it was a reality to me and a reality for me. Now, several years ago, um, I had started using um, essential oils and had pretty much um, gotten off to um, to where I wasn't taking any over the counter um, uh, medication. I was just basically just using the essential oils, and and I was one that would that would have chronic bronchitis. Um, I had sinus infections all the time. I had horrible allergies. And once I started using the essential oils for a period of five years, I never had another episode of, of, of anything going on with my respiratory system for five years. Well, when again, when you don't deal with your stress, it compromises your immune system. So I entered into a stressful time in life and I had back to back um, deaths of people that were very near and dear to me. And what happened was um, about seven months later, um, I went to see a holistic doctor and the holistic doctor um, began to ask me a few questions. You know, why was that? Why was I there? You know, what were some of the things that I was experiencing? And when I began to share with her what I was going through, um, she looked at me and she said, have you lost anyone close to you? And I just kind of like looked at her like, yeah, I did. You know, my grandmother had passed away. I had lost a very close girlfriend um, earlier that year. And she said, Shelby, you're still grieving. And I just like looked at her like, OK, well, what does what does that mean? And she said, you're 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 grieving. She said, and not only are you grieving, but your immune system is uh, compromised. So I went from a state of um, being healthy, not having any type of um, sickness, um, not any type of um, taking any type of over-the-counter meds to receiving the, um, the report, I should say, that I had tanked out my immune system because I didn't deal with the issues that were going on with me um, emotionally. I did not understand the power or the necessity to go through the process of grief. And when you are dealing with uh, grief, there is a whole process that you must go through. And at any point in time, if you stop in that process, then you have to start the process all over again from the very beginning. And so I did not understand that all the time, you know, those those few years where I was going through that slowly and slowly and slowly, I was compromising my immune system. And still to this day, even in the midst of the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, you know, I was one that got massages regularly. And now what, what am I supposed to do? I can't go get my weekly massage. Like that's like the only thing that I really do for myself. So I had to find alternative measures uh, to, to take care of my emotional wellness. And there were a few times where um, I have like a little Itobi scan that kind of lets me know where I'm at, you know, and lets me know what essential oils or what supplements I may need to use. And even, even then my immune system still was not back at 100%. So it was like I had to do like double the work. I had to make sure that, you know, doing whatever I needed to do to make sure that I was not allowing myself to slip into a place of where I will become sick again. And praise be to God, I haven't been. But your digestive system is so very important. It is so very important. I can't stress that enough. If we don't deal with our stress, if we don't deal with our trauma, it does have the ability to, to tank out our immune system. And you have to really, really work 
and do the things that you need to do in order to um, build that back up. So what happens with the digestive system is that the digestive system, the shutdown, because you can shut down your digestive system. So it can shut down, which can lead to stomach problems, which is what I had. Um, it could particularly if you eat on the run, which is sometimes what I do. I don't always at that particular time um, do the things that I need to do, even as someone that is in wellness. Um, so, yeah, I've gotten a whole lot better with that. But the increase in the acidity can also contribute to stomach ulcers. So when we don't maintain good gut health, good gut health will impact your immune system. It will have a direct impact on it. So again, these are the secondary stress response. The secondary stress response deals with the ongoing response to undealt with stress. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move into what are some of the warning signs because next week we'll do another segment on stop the stress. So what are some of the warning signs? One of the things that I always would teach my clients is to, is to be aware of your body. We have to be aware of what is going on on the inside. And we cannot allow ourselves just to let things go on and on and on and not address them, you know, because, oh, you know, well, you know, it, it, it may get all right. Mm -mm. No. No, we have to be aware and we should be aware of what's going on on the inside. Now, our body, the way God has created our bodies, he has created our body literally to heal itself when you give the body what it needs. But he has also built in a, a, a mechanism and we call it homeostasis and the homeostasis is what helps us to maintain um, the balance in the body. So the, you, we already have a built in um, alarm system when something is not right. Um, our, our body is, is already divinely constructed to give us warning signs that there is something that you need to do. There is something that is going on. And if I cannot bring um, use hormones to bring the body back into balance, it's going to cause an issue. So there's four different areas that we're going to look, look at on today. We're going to look at the physical, the behavioral, the emotional, and then our thoughts and our perception, which is so very important. Now, when we look at the warning signs, some of the physical warning signs, and I want you to just think about, just ask yourself these questions. Um, make a, a, a check note, take, take a list, uh, make, a, make a note, write it down. If you have pen and paper or, or you can use your phone, um, make a list of some of these things that I'm going to read off to you on today because it could be your body giving you a warning that something is going on. Now, physical, muscle tension and headaches, sleep disturbances or tiredness. What are your, what are your sleep patterns like? Um, increased breakouts. We know we hate to see our, our, our face um, break out, have a breakout. That's a sign that, uh, that something on the inside is, is, is going on. Rapid pulse, nausea, indigestion. Sometimes we just like to pop, you know, some Tums or some Alka-Seltzer. Um, but if you have a constant problem or constant issue with indigestion, that's not normal. Your body is warning you. It's giving you a physical warning that something is wrong. Increased sweating, flushed or feeling or your face feeling hot, a prolonged or frequent headaches, a susceptibility to mild illness, dizziness or faintness, breathlessness or chest pain, ongoing nausea or stomach ache, and then ongoing fitful sleep. So rest is something that our body absolutely needs in order to heal. 
when we don't get enough rest, and I am preaching to myself right now, um, especially now um, with everything that's going on, I have to monitor how much rest am I getting? And there's a difference between sleep and rest. Are you entering into that, what they call the REM, the REM stage, where everything is, is at, the, at rest? And rest is so important because oftentimes that's when our body can heal itself. But if we're not getting enough sleep at night, um, if we are tossing and turning, if we are restless, that's an issue that there is something physical that is going on on the inside. Now, behave, uh, behavioral. Behavioral warning signs could be an appetite changes or compulsive eating. Um, impatience or carelessness, you know, are you one that's quick to pop off at somebody? You know, does it take much, you know, can somebody just look at you the wrong way <laughs> and you're popping off? Uh, that's a behavioral warning sign. Uh, what about um, hyperactivity? You know, are you, are you constantly have to be doing something? You know, just, are you just hyper, hyper, hyper? Are you on, on 10 all the time? That's a behavioral warning sign that something's going on. Uh, poor productivity or low energy. Um, what is your ability to focus? What is your focus like? Um, do you find yourself wandering off in your, in your thoughts, you know, when you're supposed to be focused on your work or focused on a particular task that you're doing? Um, let's see here. Avoidance of situation or places. Um, change in sleeping patterns. Now, if we look at um, some others, so these are early warning signs, uh, again, uh, secondary signs, and then the, the stress signs. The stress signs are these last ones. Increase in alcohol, cigarette, or drug use. These are things that you may not be doing it, but you can, you can be able to identify it in others and those around you, those you are in relationship with. Uh, what about increased absenteeism? You just don't show up. I know a lot of people are still working from home, um, but just think about what your patterns were before before COVID hit. You know, um, were you were you constantly avoiding? Were you not showing up? You know, whether it's for work or for just places where you know that you were supposed to be. That's a behavioral warning sign that you are stressed. What about um, aggression or irritability or sudden tears? If you just suddenly are just sitting there minding your own business and, and trying to focus and then all of a sudden you bust out in tears, that's a warning sign. Your body is trying to, to, to get a release. Let's take a look at the emotional, emotional. Now, these are the early, early in the early warning signs, early warning signs of emotional um, emotional uh, breakdown would be anxiety or sadness. Um, there are people that um, that are uh, suffer with uh, what they call sad, uh, which is a seasonal. Um, I think a seasonal affective disorder. Um, I think that that's what the the acronym stands for. Um, but because of the lack of sunlight. Um, and sunshine, not getting enough vitamin D, um, they, they, they become very, very sad or it's a, it's a mild form of depression. You know, do you, are, do you suffer with that? Um, are you moody or grumpy? Uh, what about withdrawal or feelings of isolation? Are you withdrawing where you just don't want to be around people and you're normally a people person or you normally don't mind having company around? What about low self-esteem? Low self-esteem is an emotional early warning sign of stress. What about feelings of guilt and shame? Feelings of guilt and shame. These are early warning signs that our body is trying to tell us that we are stressed out. Now, what are the, the secondary stress signs? Would be extreme anger or overreaction. Again, it's more than just kind of popping off, but I mean, you just get angry to the to the point where uh, you punch in walls, you know, um, 
you're you're causing bodily harm or physical harm, not only just to yourself, but possibly even to others. You know, that has it increased your uh, your your ability to to be abusive, whether that's uh, well, we're talking about emotional here, but emotional abuse. So are you lashing out at people? Now, what about a loss of libido? Loss of sex drive. Listen, stress will impact your sex life. So that loss of libido, that's very important to our married folks. <laughs> what about overwhelming feelings of panic and anxiety? These are the secondary signs, secondary warning signs that you are stressed and that there is something that you need to do to take action. Now, finally, I want to look at thoughts and perception, thoughts and perception. The inability to make decisions or your muddled thinking. Again, we talked about that earlier, that muddled thinking, um, the, uh, the inability to be able to focus. What about re reduced coordination and creativity, especially if you are a creative? But those who are creatives, that's the last thing that we need is to, to, to encounter um, stress. But if you are not able to focus, if you aren't able to concentrate, that's what's happening. Your body is telling you that there is something that is going on that is impacting your ability to think and to perceive. Now, what about becoming more vague or forgetful? Um, negative globalization or, or everything is going wrong, everything is going bad. This is one that we all have to guard against, even now. When you don't have the right perspective, if you don't have the understanding, or if you don't even have a relationship with, with, with God, you can become overwhelmed. Or even if you do have a relationship with God, if you're not seeing things through his lens, if you are not relying on your faith, we can enter into easily of everything is going wrong or everything, everything is bad. What about fear of rejection and defensiveness? So you will put up walls to keep people because it's like, you know, well, I'm going to protect myself at all costs. Rush decisions. That's an, a warning sign, an early warning sign of stress. Also oversensitive to criticism. Oversensitive to criticism. That is an early warning sign to stress. Now, the secondary stress of these warning signs would be poor concentration, negative self-talk. What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying about yourself? Uh, what about feelings of unfairness or or just not being able to switch off your thoughts? That impacts everything. It impacts your ability to be able to sleep, your ability to be able to rest. So these are the things that we have to be mindful of. We have to be mindful of what is taking place. What are the effects of stress on our body? And so when we're talking about looking at this through the lens of COVID-19, even for those that, that have gone through COVID and, and, and you have survived, um, you have been healed from it, you know, um, looking at just the whole scope, the whole scope of what happens. And this is why we have to be proactive when it comes to our health and our wellness. We have to get into a place where we are dealing with these issues because, again, as I stated earlier, feelings buried alive never die. They go somewhere. And all it takes is for one event um, to send you over the edge that will send your body into a state of its inability to be able to, to process because everything has just been loaded up and piled on top of one another, on top of one another, on top of one another until one day you are just like a steam pipe 
that just goes off because there's too much pressure that has been in, inside of you. And eventually it goes somewhere. Eventually it goes somewhere. So again, these were um, the secondary stress response the secondary stress response, again, this is the ongoing response to undealt with stress. We talked about the skin again, our heart, our muscles, our lungs, our liver, our blood, our cholesterol, and our digestion. Then we looked at the four different areas of our physical, our behavioral, our emotional, our thoughts, and our perception. Our body will always give us warning signs when something is not right. We were divinely created that way. We were divinely created to heal ourselves. When we give the body what it needs and when we do the things that the body needs in order to reverse those processes. Okay. So I don't know if anybody has any um, questions or any comments. I do thank you all for um, for joining me on on this morning. Um, next week we are going to go over um, stop the stress, and we're going to have even more um, tips on how you can take care of yourself um, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of managing this COVID nineteen stress. Now, am I magnifying COVID-19? Absolutely not. As one who is a um, believer um, in the Lord, um, who believes and knows where we are to cast our care and our concern on him, not everybody is a believer. And even for those that are believers, we cannot make the assumption that everybody knows the things that they need to do in order to manage stress. And so um, I'm just grateful for the assignment um, that God has given me when it comes to talking about um, this area of, of healing, this area of wholeness, because it is a process. Um, it is a process. Not everyone that Jesus healed uh, was healed immediately. And we may even come back and even do a pro podcast um, on that where we are talking about the the type, the different types of, of healing and what happens in all of those processes. So I am going to sign off for today. And I thank you all for joining me for this week's Holistic Life podcast. Again, we will be back on next Tuesday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget to visit the website uh, sign up for our mailing list because we have several things that we are going to be doing um, over the next, um, really down through 2021. Again, that website is www.jewelsofwellness.net. Grab your free download when you sign up for um, the mailing list. And I look forward to seeing you all again on next week. God bless. Bye-bye.